This is your daily real estate syndication show, and I am your host, Whitney Sewell. Today is a highlight show that's packed with value from different guests around a specific topic. Don't forget to like and subscribe, but also go to lifebridgecapital.com where you can sign up to start investing in real estate today. I hope you enjoy the show. Our guest is Mark Hinteman. Thanks for being on the show, Mark. Hey, thanks for having me. Now, I'm honored to have you on the show. And a little about Mark, he's an Emmy-nominated writer and producer who's written for David Letterman and The Family Guy and created shows for Fox and MTV. Also maintains an avid real estate side hustle, having bought a duplex with his first script payments as a hedge against the uncertainty of the entertainment career. He since built a $70 million multifamily portfolio and a company, a Quantum Capital, which manages and syndicates multifamily investments. His mission is to help others achieve financial stability and freedom through real estate investing so they don't have to become television writers. So, you know, just the conversation I've had with Mark before we started interviewing has been great. I'm learning a little more about his business and what he's up to. And I'm looking forward to, to you sharing that with the listeners as well, Mark. And thank you again for your time and tell the listeners, you know, who you are and elaborate a little bit about on, you know, how you got where you're at and, and we'll dive in. Sure. I'm originally from Ohio, just outside of Cleveland. I never started out with the intent of being a real estate investor. I wanted to be a writer and I... Didn't know if that was a possible career. I had never known anybody in the entertainment business or anyone had at least who had succeeded out there, but I thought I'd give it a shot. I began pursuing that. I started out as a greeting card writer and illustrator in the alternative humor department at American Greetings. And then my cards got me hired to write for David Letterman and then moved out to LA, kind of realized I was in New York and realized that most of the business was in LA. So moved out here and joined a new show called Family Guy back in 2000 or 99 was when Family Guy started. I was convinced that I was going to be unemployed you know, all throughout the early stages of my career. I was convinced that in six months, I was going to be unemployed and never, and never work again. And what happened is I was in a, an apartment, my one bedroom apartment with my girlfriend at the time and... and my wife now, and we, they raised the rent. The landlord raised the rent and we were looking at our apartments. And we visited an apartment, walked out and saw an open house across the street. And we, it was a Saturday afternoon. So we wandered in and talked to the broker and her name was Junon. And she said, we said, we're not really buyers. We, we just visited the apartment across the street. And she's like, well, you know, what's your financial situation? I had just gotten my first script payments at Family Guy. I probably... I had been in debt and broke for what seemed like an eternity my whole life. But I had about $45,000 saved up at this point with my first couple script payments. And she's like, you should put that to a more, toward a mortgage. And I was like, I don't want a mortgage. Like, I'm going to be unemployed. That's the last thing I want is, is the burden of a mortgage. But I said, I would, the only thing I would ever consider is it would have to be the best investment I've ever made because I could sure use some kind of financial cushion or other source of income for when I am unemployed, which I was always sure I was going to be. We parted ways. She called me a couple of weeks later. She said, I found the property you need to buy. There's a catch. You need to become a landlord. She showed me a kind of a, a, a duplex in a great up and coming area. It was marginal at the time, but you could tell it was coming up fast and it needed some work. And I said, I looked at it. I could see the potential and said, sure. And it got into a bidding war, got this duplex, and tried to embrace being a landlord in this real estate purchase I had just made, which I was 100% convinced it was a huge mistake and was going to be a disaster for me. But I hooked immediately on real estate, turning property into something that was really nice and full. And the economics of it worked. I had my next door neighbor from Virginia as well, Mike Henry, who is a voice actor, family guy. He does the voice of Herbert Consuela in Cleveland. If anyone uh, watches the show, he was my my tenant next door. So it was kind of an easy first landlord experience, although somewhat easy. I don't know. Maybe he's a good tenant to learn how to be a landlord with. In 2000, sold in 2005 and had a pretty remarkable Earn about two cents. You know, I bought it for four thirty five, four hundred thirty five thousand, which I can was convinced had overpaid. 
but I sold it for 1.27. And I was, by that time, I was completely hooked. Real estate, I had discovered this thing that I wanted to do for the rest of my life. This was my investment vehicle. It was going to give me security in the entertainment business. And yeah, it was, I was no longer ever going to put money towards a, you know, just a financial manager who would get me four to five percent. I was going to actively invest. And I did so throughout the early 2000s and started to build my portfolio. Nice. It was neat that you said you're writing greeting cards and that's what got you hired with David Letterman, you know, and then, but then you move from there to, you know, another show. And then all of a sudden, I mean, I hear it all the time. I accidentally kind of got into real estate. You know, you met somebody that said, Hey, you know, you need this property and somehow it happened. And now all of a sudden you start seeing some benefits of owning real estate and like, okay, wow. You know, this is something I really need to learn more about. Uh, but now you've gone from duplex to, you know, it's a $70 million, you know, multifamily portfolio. And so you've done something, you know, you've made a few moves since that duplex, that's for sure. You know, wh what was key in getting you from the duplex to, to where you're at now? I think I tried to buy a building or two a year once I kind of had wrapped my head around that real estate was so great. Honestly, when I bought that duplex year one of owning it, I was convinced this, I had just made the biggest mistake of my life and then that this was going to result in my financial ruin. Uh, year two, my first tenant had moved out and I had increased the rents and suddenly it was covering half my mortgage. Year three, I refinanced and suddenly they were paying all of my mortgage. And year three, I was convinced that this was the greatest thing in the world. So I went full across the spectrum from disaster to like, oh my God, I have to do this all the time. And I was committed to it. So the moves I made, I started buying a couple buildings a year. I would pump any income I had. A, a nice virtuous cycle of this is when you have this vehicle that you're committed to. I never wanted to buy a nice car. I never wanted to spend any money anywhere else. I wanted to put it all into real estate investments. And I was doing that. And I got... I became known as you know amongst my writing peers and in entertainment peers as someone who was doing a pretty aggressive real estate side hustle and was the guy obsessed with real estate. And so a lot of them would say like, "Hey, could we invest with you if you find something?" And that's kind of how I got into partnerships and syndications. And I do those sort of sparingly. I do a lot of my own investing, but when I find a deal. That pencils out as a syndication, you know, I sort of have a group of people I could go to and go into bigger, bigger properties that way. Nice. So you started becoming known as the real estate guy amongst your peers, your network, and then they're looking to you for that that guidance or how to invest in real estate. Exactly. Yeah. So, so tell us about some of the opportunities you're working on now, and you know, you know, what's your focus now? For, you know, from the duplex to doing one or two deals a year. Are you mostly multifamily? Are you retail? What's your focus? I am exclusively retail, and I've grown. I I think I have about 300 units, and about to add maybe 75 more. And I've branched out from LA. I was in LA for eight years. Altogether, I was in LA exclusively for about 17 years investing. And I think it's a great market. It's, it's not a market I selected. It was a market that kind of selected me. It was just the pool that I learned to swim in. And because of my financial situation, you know, I wasn't a millionaire or I didn't... You know, people think LA is such an expensive market. I just took whatever I had and bought the cheapest buildings I could find in the best locations. And it turned out to be a pretty good strategy because I was buying... I sort of zeroed in on these metrics of paying about... Trying to target about $250 a square foot, which may sound high, but it's actually very cheap for LA given the cost of the land. And I, I, would, I would go for... Shoot for about $250 a square foot and a 5 cap. And those are challenging metrics to hit. But when you hit them, the average cost to build new construction in LA is about $500 a square foot. And the average cap rate is in LA is maybe in the threes, mid threes. So I find these old buildings that need work and I buy them for about half the replacement cost. And I always make sure they're in the core area of the city, which means like not out on the outskirts. I'm in central LA, right next to downtown, right next to the employment hubs. And you know, I use 
I focus there because I don't, I, I live not too far from there, but also, you know, I've been through the 2008 crash and I know that there's going to be a big cushion when you can buy it that far below market. And you're in that tier of workforce housing that I was in the 2008 uh, recession with those properties, several of them. And they did, they were very resilient. They, they maintained the rent levels and we wrote it out and did, did very well through the 2008. And I kind of came away. It was a scary time, no question about it. But in retrospect, I thought I, this is a strategy that I need to, I need to stick with because I don't need the anxiety of hanging out there with, you know, high risk properties. Our guest is Stefan Arneo. Thanks for being on the show, Stefan. Thanks for having me, Whitney. I'm honored to have you on the show, Stefan, and, and a little about him. He's an award-winning real estate investor, entrepreneur, author, and winner of the 2014 Rich Dad International Hall of Fame Award, has been featured in Canadian Real Estate Wealth Magazine and Entrepreneur Magazine, which named him one of the top 10 real estate influencers to follow. Starting with only $1,200, Stefan has built a multi-million dollar portfolio for himself and his partners and has been recognized on the self-made list. So Stefan, thanks again for your time and, and being on the show. Give the listeners a little more about who you are and, and, and I'd like to dive into your story a little bit, you know, $1,200 to get to where you're at now and then let's dive into one of your current books. And thanks for having me, Whitney. So uh, my story started when I was 16 years old. I wanted to be a rock star. And I told my mom, told my dad, I want to be a rock star. I want a musician. My mom said, that's a horrible idea. My dad said, that's horrible. But my mom said, look, I love you. I support you. Go to music school and maybe you can get a degree. And if it doesn't work out with music, maybe you can end up as a teacher or something. And so I went to school, dropped out of the music school, dropped out of the business school, dropped out of computer science. And I went to the, the office there. I said, hey, how can I get out of here without shaming my parents? I said, take two English classes and you can have an English degree. So I took two poetry classes. They gave me an English degree. I left. And after school, I had a rock band. Yeah, that was my little business. And it turned out that you know having a rock band is a super difficult business. And I'm playing shows and I started, my band fell apart. I started to burn out and lay on the couch for a couple months. And then I read a little book called Rich Dad Poor Dad. And it said, anybody could become rich. And this is like right at a time I was giving up the idea of being rich and famous. I, I said, I'm going to give that up. That goal is going to go away. And I read Rich Dad Poor Dad. It said, anybody can be rich. Anybody can build a business. Anybody can get passive income and a real estate portfolio. I thought, damn, that sounds good. I had like 22 or 24 clients as a guitar teacher at the time. And I had all these checks. I was self-employed. I was making 10 grand a year. And I thought, wouldn't it be great if I could get the same money in the mail passively without teaching guitar lessons? And so I went and took a little Donald Trump real estate two-day seminar. And then I went to another seminar, another seminar. And you know, by 28 and a half, became a self-made millionaire and did that by flipping houses, buying, fixing, and selling properties. And now I'm 33. I've got an education company, still have a portfolio, got another real estate company, and then also have a social media company. So, you know, it's, it's been a real journey for a guy who just wanted to flip a house and make 10 grand. And now here I am doing all sorts of crazy things I would never imagine. I've got eight books that are going to be published by winter, by Christmas, and would have never imagined I'd be here today. Wow. So 16, you wanted to be a rock star. That didn't work out so well. But by 28, you were a millionaire and all in all in real estate, just like you had read in Rich Dad Poor Dad. Is that right? Yeah. I mean, I made I made a lot of money buying, fixing, and selling properties. And then I also I also have a portfolio of, of holding properties. And between the two, that made me the the millionaire. Now here's the thing. Millionaire these days doesn't do much for you. I'll say that. You know, you're middle class if you're a millionaire. You own a couple properties, you own a car. Or big deal, you can go on some vacations. It's not like a millionaire in 1960 or a millionaire in 1920. You know, when Henry Ford was a billionaire, a millionaire was a lot of things. I was like 10 or 20 or 30 million nowadays. So it's a milestone. It's cool. I don't think it really changed your life. But you know, when you're a millionaire, it certainly takes away the want and the need for money. I can go buy what I want when I want. I can have whatever I want for dinner. I'm down here in Indianapolis today hanging out with one of my friends who does, I think, 400 to 500 real estate deals a year. And I can just do that. You know, I was in Vegas on the weekend. I was in LA last week. I was in Ottawa, Canada. I was in Vancouver for two weeks. I can do that because guess what? I have the financial capacity to do that. So there's a certain amount of freedom you get with being a millionaire, but you know, does it does it get you a private jet these days? No, it's more like maybe a 10, 20, 30, 50, 100 millionaire gets the jet. You know, you're still flying commercial if you're a millionaire. So what is it in real estate that you're strictly focused on now? I know you did some flipping, some things like that to get to that million, but did it stay flipping? What did you move into? 
So there's three things that I'm very good at. One is buying at 40, 60 cents on the dollar. So very, very good at buying distressed assets. Second thing is raising capital. Very good at raising capital. I came from the private equity world. So I learned to raise money for big deals. And then the third thing is personal branding. So for a long time, it was flipping, flipping, flipping. The last little bit, it's been the buy, fix, refinance, hold. And now I'm debating as to whether I should go into turnkey and start selling turnkey, or should I just go into like a private equity kind of fund? And I'm leaning towards the private equity because I'm a busy guy. I've got a lot of media. I have a coaching company. I'm always flying around, moving around. I can buy ads, buy media. And I think a private equity is probably going to be what's going to be on my back end. Like my, my partner and I, we were looking at a $7.7 .7 million 30 in a building. And uh, we got the money for it. Boom, like right away. We know how to raise money. My partner is a student of mine. We know how to do that. It's just a matter of, okay, how do you organize this into a fund? So I, I feel like that's going to be the next thing for me is some sort of fun because I am very good at raising money, very good at selling, very good at marketing and building a brand. As far as like bricks and sticks and dirt, man, I, I hate construction. I hate tenants. <laughs> I don't like doing all the boots on the ground and the dirty stuff. I've done that. You know, I've flipped a house with 129 cats in it, flipped houses with dead people in them. I've had burned down houses. I've had two houses burned down on me. I'm, I'm just ready for something clean, I think. No, that's why we love the syndication business because we don't want to manage tenants personally on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, so yeah, no, that's awesome. And exactly. you know, I, I'd love to hear more about, maybe you give us a couple tips on, on you know, your best tips on raising capital or getting, so I know there's like so many listeners who are wanting to get started in this business and they're trying to do it by raising capital. Maybe you could just shed some light there and then, and then we'll move into maybe a couple things about branding and, and also your book. Yeah. So the most important thing I think for raising capital is to educate your clients. And I used to work for a company, we raised like $135 million in some, a few years. And the business model was simple, educate, the market more than anyone else. So we gave out more free education than anybody else. Because we gave out more free education, we ended up with more money. And when I got into business for myself, I started blogging. So I started blogging every day. I was writing articles every day about something I learned. And after 120 days or so of blogging every day, I had speaking engagements. I had a book. I took 35 of the blogs I made in my first book called Money People Deal. You can go to that moneypeopledeal.com. And Money People Deal, that book raised $5 million of capital for me in a year. So I took a little $3,000 how to make a book course. I spent $2,000 on production. And I went and raised $5 million. And with that money, I wasn't the smartest guy back then. I just flipped and flipped and flipped. I should have like bought a $20 million building. Like if, I, if I was a smarter guy, I would have done that. But I was out flipping houses and I wanted to make 10 grand and 30 grand and 20 grand. I was just small minded. So that's what I was doing, you know, making 30, 40 grand a month, which is a good paycheck for a kid who's. 26, you know, but with that, you know, the, the key in that story is it's the education platform that allows you to raise capital because lots of people have money. There's millions and millions of dollars everywhere, every day looking for a home, looking for somebody to take those dollars and grow them, but they don't know who or how or what. So if you're providing some of the education and making it easy for them to come and give you money, hey, that's awesome. So that's what my first book, Money People Deal, did. And you know, from there, it was just a rocket ride. Thank you for being a loyal listener of the show. Please subscribe and share it with your friends. We want to help you become the passive investor you've always wanted to become, but also the operator you've always wanted to become. We want to be the number one resource for your real estate investing journey. But go to lifebridgecapital.com where you can start investing in real estate today.